this guy, John G. Abi Said, wrote this book, The Enlightenment of the World, 1912. All right? 1912. What was going on in those days, man? Remember, NASA, none of that was existed. Spaceships, none of that existed. I'm going to get to that. I just want to know, I just want you to see what he wrote. You know? So it says, this book has, in my opinion, good proofs to show that the Earth is flat and always remains stationary, while the sun, moon, and stars are always in motion. It also contains some testimonials on the subject. Boston, Massachusetts, Beantown, baby, that's where I'm from, so I know the history. It's there, the knowledge of the universities and all that, these people did their studies, so May 13, 1910. All right, so I just wanted to show you this. You know, these, these things exist. Okay, I can explain how you can see the moon and the sun. How come you can see the moon and the sun at the same time sometimes? If we have a globe, you know, think about it the people down there on the other side, what are they seeing? If we see in both of them. Alright, so we're gonna jump into another little fun video right here. Alright, now we got the vibes going. Right? Alright, so it says visual line of sight calculations dependent on Earth's curvature. So we're gonna read what they say is uh, the measurement to, um, for the curvature of the Earth. So it says the visual line of sight calculations dependent on Earth's curvature. It says here, the Earth has a radius of approximately 3,965 uh, miles. Using the Pythagorean theorem that calculates to an average curvature of 7.98 inches per mile or approximately 8 inches per mile squared. The distance of, to the horizon in miles from height of an observer is approximately equal to 1.23 times the square root of the height in feet. For example, 1.23 times the square root of A divided by 12 equals 1 mile. Okay? Inversely, given the horizon distance in miles, the height in feet required to be visible equals the distance in miles squared divided by 1.513. The second example above concerning the moon rising over a distant range also requires some topographic map calculations. Using the tan trigonometric function okay you hearing all this can you do this can you calculate this thus if a peak rises up to 1844 feet at a distance of 10 miles or 52,800 feet it will form an angle of two degrees with a theor theoretical flat horizon the tan is so it says at 10 at 1000 feet from 10 miles I should have two degrees of, of curvature as you can see in the picture right here all right so just like these dudes I'm gonna force you guys to um, you know put on the glasses you know what I'm saying? I don't know if you guys know this movie but yeah they live <laughs> here's the glasses here's the glasses all right here we go Look at that. Got a little stuck, but that's all that's what's up. I have to show you that. There we go. Okay. Oh, they go the sun. 96 million miles away, that's what they say, right? And the Bible and everybody else tells us it's not. Okay? It, they tell us it's inside the firmament. It's a luminary. It's alive. It's an angel, these stars, these moons, these planets, are luminaries, angels, just like Enoch says they are, and just like a lot of verses of the Bible, which I will be showing you soon.
So for every mile, we're supposed to have a curvature. You know what I mean? Uh, it's a weird number. I think it even adds up to like 0.6666, something like that. And I can probably look for that for you right now so you can see it. Okay. And, I mean, show me the curvature. Dun, dun, dun. Show me the curvature. I got my senses, so I'm gonna use them. Yeah, hey, hey. Show me your curvature. I don't see it, no way, no way, no. I'm burning it with looting tonight. Yeah. All right, yes, yes, you can get another, uh, you know, point of view, another cam somebody brought up again. So let's go. Of course, um, all lenses, they come, most of them, they all come on purpose. But we're gonna, sh I mean, if you ever wanna try this out and do it yourself, go ahead. You'll see. By now, I mean, look at the altitude we're in. We're supposed to have curvature already, a lot of curvature. Not even supposed to curve like that up like that if it was so curved down. Shouldn't do that. One hundred and ten thousand feet. 33 kilometers and the earth is flat. Look at that. Look at that. No distortion. So what are you seeing? Have you gone up there? Have you gone up there and seen it for yourself? Of course not. All right? And this thing eventually goes up and pops. It's pretty crazy. Where's all the stars? Show me the curvature, dog. Dog cam. Come on, dog cam. <laughs> so, as I was saying before, I would like to take you on this journey. Okay? 
you know, if you don't want to believe it, it's okay. You know, just follow me and see where I'm going with it. Oh, pop goes the weasel. And we pop the balloon. And it's going down. It's going down with all your beliefs. It's crashing down with all your beliefs. Truth hurts inside sometimes. But once you stop spinning and you can think firmly, then you can think right. How can you think if you're spinning, you're dizzy? You've been dizzy all your life. Orientate yourself. Firm. It's falling apart. It's all the deceit, deceitfulness. I'm going to show you what NASA means and what, how it was created. All right? I mean, we're disconnecting from what it was written before. It doesn't have to, it's not about religion. It's not about a white man with white beard on, sitting on heaven either. It's about no images. It's about truth. All right? So, the leaves are falling. You see, they're breaking, they're going down right here. Boom, you can see it spinning. It's going crazy. It's going crazy. It doesn't change the shape of the earth at all okay <laughs> it's the edge of the world baby and all of western civilization the sun may rise in the east at least it settles in the final location it's understood that hollywood sells californication baby yes. space may be the final frontier but it's made in a hollywood basement you heard that right space may be the final frontier but it's made in a hollywood basement red hot chili peppers californication damien marley and nas damien marley and nas and it says some of the smartest dummies can't read the language of egyptian mummies and they go fly to the moon and can't find food for the starving tummies you know what I mean? All right. So check this out. Check out what my boy's saying right here. One love, one love. Hmm. Check it out. It says the Earth was flat. If you went too far, you would fall off. Now the Earth is round. If the shape changed again, everybody would have started laughing. The average man can't prove most of the things that he chooses to speak up and still won't research and find out the root of the truth that you seek up. Okay? That's deep right there, man. Like, shit. The earth was flat. If you went too far, you would fall off. Now the earth is round. If the shape changed again. So, we went from flat to round. Now, he's saying if, it's, if, it, if it was to change again, like if we were to remember, if we were to realize, everybody started saying, yo, it's flat. Everybody would have start laugh. Why would everybody start laughing? Think about it. You're laughing at me right now, maybe, inside a little bit. Those who don't want to like. But you know what? The average man can't prove most of the things that he chooses to speak of and still won't research and find out the root of the truth that you seek of, all right? Boom, right there. This is a Hennessy commercial. Um, just, just look at the message. Subliminal. Over the clouds, we see a flat earth. Flat. Do you see that? Flat. Okay, flat. Oh, what is that? What is that? Oh. We'll have to play that again. Sorry, guys. This is a Hennessy commercial, so look at that. Flat. Mm -hmm. Oh, oh, did it 
straight to us again. Let's just go right to it. Okay, so hold on, hold on. Oh, oh, oh. All right. So, let's freak a little bit. Oh, oh, what is that? It's coming out of the eye. Whoa, look at this. Water. Boom! Into water. He's younger. Oh no, that was his son actually. His son went to the deep. So yeah. Whoa. So he went into the waters above. Ended up in the ocean. Yeah. In 1931, Auguste Picard became the first man to reach the stratosphere. In 1960, his son, well, went to the deep, actually broke the record. So, what do we see there, man? So, what do we see there? Hennessy showing us. Because if you didn't know about this guy, he went all the way up there before NASA and all these people went up there. Okay. You see, that's him, all right? Where is this? Okay, so it says, it seemed a flat disc with upturned edge. Who said that? August Picard. August Picard, Popular Science Magazine, 1931. Okay, so this is the uh, one of the articles in uh, from the 1931 Popular Science magazine, right? So, it says, yellow balloon soared skyward a few weeks ago from Augsburg, Germany. Instead of a basket, it trailed an airtight black and silver aluminum ball with, within Professor Auguste Picard. Oh, well, within Professor Auguste Picard, fishes and Charles Kipler aimed to explore the air 50,000 feet up. 17 hours later, after being given up for dead, they returned safely from an estimated height of more than 52,000 feet, almost 10 miles, shattering every aircraft altitude record. Oxygen tanks kept them alive while they made observations. Records of the instruments are now being checked and interpreted. First, to rise safely into the upper layer of the Earth's atmosphere, they found the air pressure on 10 miles altitude so low, one-tenth of that at sea level that a man exposed to it would perish much as a deep sea fish burst on its own internal pressure when brought to the earth's surface. Okay. This is the illustration of the thing. So you can see he went there before NASA. He was up way up there in the atmosphere, you know. Thanks, man. We're waking up. So, Popular Science, 1931. Here's a commercial again. Okay, August Picard, Wikipedia was well, Swiss physicist adventure explorer known for his record-breaking hot air balloon flights with which he studied Earth's up, upper atmosphere, cosmic rays, for his inventions in the Baititsa, da 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 <laughs> So, okay, so what does it say here? In an article in Popular Science in August 1931 described the journey, the story of the adventure surpasses fiction. During the ascent, the aluminum ball began to leak. They plugged it desperately with Vaseline and cotton waste. Stopping the leak in the first half hour, the balloon shot upwards nine miles. Through portholes, the, the observers saw the earth through copper colored, then bluish haze. It seemed a flat disc with upturned edge. It seemed a flat, 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 not curved. At the 10 mile level, the sky appeared a deep dark blue. With observations complete, the observers tried to descend but couldn't. While their oxygen tanks emptied, they floated him aimlessly over Germany, Austria, and Italy. Cool evening air contracted the balloon's gas, brought them down on a glacier near Obergurmi, Austria, which one hour supply of oxygen. So these guys did some incredible, crazy, crazy. Like, I would never do that. Like, damn. Like, and you know what he saw? He saw it, man. He, he, and th they're not saying it seemed a flat disc. They're not saying that he said it because he did. That's the interview. And I asked him, and he said it seemed a flat disc with upturned edge. Upturned edge. From the mountains and stuff. He didn't say it was curving or anything like that. 
he saw it. Okay, that's why they did that commercial on Hennessy. You know, that's why they did it. Burst through the thing, look, boom, boom, boom. It's gonna burst through the firmament. Boom! Okay. Oh, and the ball shattered oh the no. Sky, bringing the ocean itself. Oh, here comes the waters from above. Oh, oh no. no. Broke this dream's reality wide <laughs> open. You see? <laughs> they do, do, do. They've been telling you every time. And you don't see. Let's see what's this? I don't even know what this is. The glass firmament spinning with all the stars is a powerful generator. So this is kind of like the model they use, you know, like the earth spinning this way. If we look at the uh, North Star spin, okay, so the North Star is supposed to be at the center, right, at the flat earth, and you can see how the stars go around it. I mean, look at it. They're all going around the North Star. It's not going with them. Everything, the planets, everything. We can't see that. This is slow motion. This is obviously with the uh, camera thing. Okay, so you're gonna see uh, an image that's very familiar to this. And um, so we have flights. Like if you look at the international flights, you'll see that they have like these kind of weird flights that go like looping. Like let's say you want to go from South Africa to Australia. I mean, if you really check it, if you check it, you'll see that it stops in Dubai or somewhere there. And then it goes to Australia over here. Now, I'm showing you on a flat earth. So you're seeing a boom, you're seeing like a straight line, right? You're seeing a straight line. On a globe, Africa, you know Australia is in the bottom, right? In the globe. So Africa is too, down here, South, South Africa especially. So in a globe it goes up towards you know Dubai and all those areas and then it goes down to Australia it goes down on a flat on a flat map it goes straight because <laughs> so why is the plane doing that why is the plane wasting gas why doesn't it just go like on a globe it would be down here like Australia would be down here so you would go like this way you can go this way you don't have to go up and then down check that out and you'll see what I'm talking about uh, what I want to show you here too is look how close Asia is to you know America, and I mean just from Asia and all these places over here, even cross right here and just go straight over here. Bam, bam, da, 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 da. So this is the Gleason New Standard Map of the World, right? Let me just show you this. Cool. I just showed you a depiction of the flat Earth, right? Okay, so this is an official map. Uh, let me show you. This is located in the Boston Public Library. See the symbol right here. And as you can see, let me just it's okay. Just like the flat earth one. Sorry. We have the ice surrounding the earth on a flat earth, just like on the other one. So again, some South Africa to Australia, straight line. I'm going to show you in a second how it looks like in a globe. Okay. And so, where do we find this map? And what is, look what it says right here at the top. It says, New Standard Map of the World. Longitude and time calculated on the projection of modern college, scientifically and practically correct as it is. Patented, allowed November 15, 1892. Applications made in England, Canada, France, Denmark, Sweden, Australia. Where is it showing you? An ice wall. 
around the earth. So I'm going to show you uh, who has this in their logo and how they use it and things here. Okay, so just pick this one. So this is the United Nations logo, right? We have a flat earth. Again, South Africa to Australia, straight line. Okay? We have 33 zones. 33. And you know what that means. 33. Huh. They don't play. And then of course, where's Antarctica? Alright? So here goes a little picture of what I was uh, talking about. So when you go to Malaysia or something, see you have to go up on a globe. You have to go up Dubai. This is the usual flight. Goes up to Dubai and then down. As I was saying, on a flat earth, you don't have to do that. You go from Africa to Australia. I'm going to show you again. Straight or straight. There's no need to be detoured. 33 zones. Like I just showed you. All right, and why am I showing you all this? I know I'm trying to like, it's just so I can get you to understand where I'm getting all this from, and it's not just me, and it's a lot of it is hidden right in front of you, you know, and we don't see it, you know, we don't see it, we don't pay attention to it, you know what I mean? We don't pay attention to it, but we must wake up. It's time. We must wake up. You can tell me it's flat. If it if the shape cha change again, everybody would have start laughing. Huh. Was this the was this world map made ten centuries? But this is from an article, uh, nineteen oh seven Hawaii Gazette newspaper shows more land masses outside the flat Earth. Okay, so it shows the flat Earth just how we've been showing you with the ice around, and then it shows more land beyond the pole. Beyond the South Pole, more land. It's gotta be wrong. Newspaper. Okay. Some more logos right here. World Meteorological Organization, International Civil Aviation Organization, International Marine Time Organization, United Nations. Hmm. The ones who fly and go and travel the whole earth. The same all look at their logos. Flat, 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 flat. Alright. Flat, flat, flat. Uh, the same no joke. A little snake right here. Okay. Official logos.
Speed it up, speed it up. So we see the ship, it's leaving, right? It's bouncing. It's filming, you know, we got the camera rolling. So the guy measured it. He's, you know, he calculated a certain distance depending on the curvature, right? That we saw before. We shouldn't be able to see the, 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 the ship anymore. We got to open our eyes and open our heart. The truth is inside. <laughs> we can't lose this ship. We ain't losing them. This ship's about 10.5 kilometers away from the observing camera.
Everything's gonna be alright. Everything's gonna be alright. Everything's gonna be alright. Everything's gonna be alright. Everything's gonna be alright now. Everything's gonna be alright. Yeah, my people. Everything's gonna be alright. No one alright. Back up, y'all look. Ooh, wow.